The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. If you just get eyes for your wife and you praise your wife, I tell you, whatever you praise people to become, that's what they will become. When's the last time you said something nice? When's the last time you said something that's incredible? Praise one another. Praise the insecurities away. Praise the tension away. Start speaking life to one another, not criticism and attacks. So I want to talk today about what to do if, you've, if your marriage has lost its sizzle, or I could if I wanted to be a rapper say, if you've gone from sizzle to fizzle, here's how you go back from fizzle to sizzle. So go with me. That's all I'll do, I promise. <laughs> Solomon chapter one, Song of Solomon. Just some thoughts, some highlights, some important, important topic. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get a little tight in here today, a little uh, whatever, but you know, our marriages are worth talking about. See, I don't think that the, that the, that the discussion of our sexuality belongs in pornographic websites, and that's where our children are to learn what is right and what is holy, and they will not learn it there, and if they don't hear it discussed, if we don't take sexy back in the church, if we don't take it back in the church, the world is sure putting it out through every movie, through every lie, through every song, through everything. They're, they're telling your kids one thing. We need to tell them what God's Word says. And that's what I'm going to do today. But I want to say this, that marriage is the right place for a man and a woman to be intimate with one another. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 13, that the marriage bed is honorable in all and undefiled. The marriage bed is undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. This is serious stuff. This is serious stuff. And so today I want to talk about how to get that sizzle. And you see in verse 2, this is a story of a husband and a wife. A husband and a wife. And the wife speaks and she says to her husband, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Notice that she's a woman and she's free. She's a married woman and she's not, she's not uptight about talking, about touching and loving her husband. She says, I'm married and I'm free. I want to tell you, if you're married, you are free. And she's passionate. She's sexy. She's got desires. She wants to be with her husband. There's no shame in that. There's no dirtiness in that. This is where it belongs in the marriage covenant. And it ought to be celebrated and it ought to be waited upon. Well, how far if I'm single can, can me and my boyfriend go? Where do I draw the line? It's not a matter of the line. It's a matter of the time. And the only time that is appropriate to have uh, intimacy, meaning sexual uh, relationships with one another, the only time to do that, according to God's word, is within holy matrimony. But when you're married, she says, kiss me to her husband with the kisses of his mouth. Point number one, if you are married, married couples still kiss. I know that's a shocker, but they really, really do. You see, most couples start out and they can't keep their hands off each other and they're so physical. And before you get married, you look like third base coaches. You're all kinds of touching and touching and touching and touching. But when people get married, they quit touching one another. They quit kissing. But she says, kiss me. Kiss me with the kisses of your mouth. When you leave, kiss one another. When you go off to work in the morning, walk by and kiss one another. It, it, it doesn't start in the bedroom. It starts all day long. Kiss one another. Hug one another. Don't, don't just do it for the end goal of sex, but be touchy. Touch again. Reach over. Hold hands and touch one another. Hug one another. Life is short. You never know when you're touching that person for the last time. And we need to, we need to express that. Many 
of us may have been raised in, in a home where, where we didn't see that a lot, and it was almost a taboo thing. But the truth is, you will lose the sizzle if you don't touch somewhere besides in the bed. So touch one another. Kiss one another. Hold hands. Hug one another. Do that with your children. Hug your children. Kiss your children. He, and she says, though, to her husband, kiss me in the mouth. I want you to... Kiss me in the mouth. That's pretty blunt, isn't it? Do you know that, that if you kiss, you build your immune system by the swapping of saliva? I just thought I'd throw that in there. And you burn two calories. You burn two calories. And if you get good at it, you'll burn more than two calories. Amen. But if you're married and you're not ashamed, why don't you reach over and kiss your wife right now and say, this is the best service I've been in in a long time. Praise God. Finally. Finally. Amen. That's it. That you just did a fulfillment of the scripture. Let him kiss me in the mouth, not on the cheek, in the mouth. Say amen, somebody. My wife, sometimes I'll pat her and she'll say, she'll say, I'm not your, I'm not your mother. I'm not this. I am your wife. I want to say to the single people, don't kiss too much. Don't kiss too long. And I'm dead serious. Listen to me. The, the, the more a relationship is built off of spiritual friendship, the greater the foundation. But the moment you start getting more and more physical, more and more physical, if you're not married and you start kissing, and I'm not saying you can't kiss somebody. Let's live in the real world. Boys are going to kiss girls. But here's the problem with it. I'm a guy, and let's say I'm a single guy, and I'm kissing my girlfriend. My hands are on her back, and they, they will only do this for so long. A man's hands will only do this. I'm just going to talk like I need to talk today. And I want to teach you girls something. You young girls, you, 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 he will go as far. If he's a guy, he will go as far as you'll let him go. That's why you don't let him just put his little hands all over you. Because a man has a weakness. There's some kind of muscle in our arm that we can only do that so long. And our hands start dropping, and we can't, we can't help it. It's just what our hands do. And I'm just telling you, you know, you make it out, and you can, be a, you can be a Christian, and she can be a Christian. You can be as sincere as you can be, but you stay in alone by yourself, making out longer and longer and longer and longer. After a while, they're going to quit rubbing the back. Something's going to get serious and more and more serious. And that's why, you know, you don't need to be alone all the time. Watch your time. Watch your touching. Watch your kissing. It can get out of hand. It can get out of hand. She says to him, kiss me with the kisses of your mouth, verse 3, because the fragrance you, of, your, of your good ointments I smell. She said, you smell good. You, you have good hygiene. You, you groom yourself. You, you look nice. You know, maybe we ought to say to one another after we're married, what can I do? We ought to keep each other up, you know, and keep, our, keep ourselves up for our mate. And keep the sizzle in it. Kiss one another. Touch one another. But ask your mate, what can I do to, to, to look better? You want me to go get a new haircut? You want me to, uh, do you like me with one eyebrow or, or two? Do you want me to shave in between? It doesn't matter. I, it doesn't matter to me. I, I just want you to like what I look like. I want to be attracted. Talk that stuff over. Talk it over. What do you like? What, what don't you like? She says, I like you, how you smell. And then she says something so powerful in the next verse. She says, or that, that same verse, your name is an ointment poured forth. Your name, your name has such integrity. Your name has such character. She says in the next part of that verse that the virgins love you. All the girls are talking about you. They wish that they had what I have in you because you're a man of character. You're a man of integrity. You're not playing around. You're not out messing around. You are a good man. You've got a good name. When it says it's poured out, you remember the woman who poured out the oil on Jesus' feet? It was expensive. In other words, it's valuable. Your name is valuable. You've got a good name. And your name is it's an honor for me to have your... She's praising him. She's speaking well of him. And I, I, you know, I think... I think to, to the singles that, that are here today, you know, watch your name, watch your reputation. You know, you know uh, uh, if you don't like the kind of fish you're catching, change the bait. And, and if, you, if, if you're still going to the club, getting your twerk on, don't be, don't be amazed that you attract lowlifes and lo lounge lizards that, that just sleep with you and leave you and make you feel dirty and unclean. I mean, and... If you're not going to bake a cake, don't preheat the oven. Don't, don't, 
don't keep exciting yourself and letting people go too far in, in kissing and making out. If you're not going to bake a cake, don't preheat the oven. Just keep everything, build a spiritual friendship. And you know, like attracts like. If you're single, listen to me very carefully. Become the person you're wanting to attract. Become that person. Do you want a God seeker? Become that person. Do you want a person who attends church regularly? Attend church regularly. Do you want a person who's pure and keeping themselves and not sleeping with people until they get married? Then become that person and you will attract what you are. Become the person that you're trying to attract. God says, you pursue me and I'll make them pursue you. But it's all in me. Seek first the kingdom and I'll add to you. I'll, I'll, I am a matchmaker and I will bring. When you become the person that you want to attract, that's what you will attract. And so I encourage you to do that. And she, he so built her up, if you read it, he builds her up and praises her that she begins to discuss her, her physical insecurities. Every woman, and for that matter, every man has a physical insecurity. We have physical for the men, it's love handles. For the women, it's whatever, you know, there's, there's, but, but my nose is too big or my this or that or that and this. And, and if you don't watch it, we will focus on that and put each other down. But she feels so, listen, so trustworthy. This man is that she begins to expose her physical insecurities. And she says in verse six, do not look upon me because I'm sunburned or dark because the sun has tanned me. Now here's the thought behind it. In Bible days, they worked, uh, someone uh, very wealthy would not have to work in the field, but someone who worked in the field, the sun would bake and, and, and she even says in the next part of that verse that my skin is like the tent it's like a tent. It's leathery. It's hard. And she's saying, I'm, 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 I'm insecure about this. I have physical insecurities. And she's, she's, she's saying, you provide a, a place that I can share this with you. And, and he loves her insecurities away. He praises her insecurities away. He starts talking. She even makes this statement in the next part of the verse. She says, they made me the keeper of their vineyards, but my own vineyard I have not kept. Listen to me, those of you who just had babies and stuff. Because what she's saying is, I've been so busy having babies. I've been so busy taking care of these children. I've been so busy that I've kind of let my own vineyard go. And I'm, I, my body's not what it used to be. And I, I know I need to get back in the gym or this or that. I, but I just don't have time. I'm running all over the place. She said, my own vineyard I have not kept. And she's embarrassed about it. But he doesn't put her down. He doesn't make some stupid comment, some belittling comment. He starts praising and loving her insecurities away. I'm going to tell you something. If you just get eyes for your wife and you'll praise your wife, I tell you, whatever you praise people to become, that's what they will become. And he begins to praise her. He begins to talk to her. But in verse 3, she said, I sat down in his shade with great delight. Look, look at this. I sat down in his shade. What was her insecurity? Son leather skin, making her darker and darker because of the sunshine baking her and leathering her skin. But she says, you make me so secure the way you talk to me, the way you praise me, that I feel like I'm in your shade. Did you catch that? You shade me from my insecurities because you build me up. I tell you, if we don't if we don't watch it, our words will destroy our marriages, destroy our intimacy with one another, our relationships. The power of death and life are in the tongue. And if all you do is cut down one another, attack one another, argue with one another, when's the last time you said something sweet? When's the last time you said something nice? When's the last time you said something that's incredible? You know, the other day, Sharice did something. I'm not, I'm certainly, I'm least in this. I need all the help. I can get. But she did something for one of our children that touched my heart. She went a whole day and she just did something above and beyond helping her. And, and, and it was, a, it was a, a, a hard thing that she had to do. And she did it for her daughter. And when I couldn't help when she got in late, later that afternoon, I came home from the office. I couldn't help, but I started, to, I thought it and I sat there and I thought she is incredible. Man, I cannot believe she went and did that. I can't believe that she 
got down and did what she did and worked so hard and did this and did that and did this all day long for about seven hours. She, she just did this. And, and, and I was thinking it and something said, why are you thinking it? Why don't you say it? So I got up and I walked over and I put my arms around her and I said, I love you because you are such an incredible mother. See, anybody can say, I love you. But you ought to add one word to it. I love you because, because you're an amazing provider. And I appreciate the way you take care of this family and you provide. What if you said that to your husband? What if you said that to your wife? I love you because you, you're amazing. You, you do that homework. I could, that child would never get out of the second grade in math if I had to do it. But you do that homework. And I, I tell you, you're incredible. There's so many things. We can point out all the negative if we want to, or we can begin to praise one one another. Praise the insecurities away. Praise the tension away. Start speaking life to one another, not criticism and attacks. Amen. Go ahead and clap. So watch this. He says, he says to her, he says, girl, you are fine. In verse, in chapter four, he says, in verse one, behold, you are fair. You know, he's saying you're beautiful. This is how married people are supposed to talk to one another. You're beautiful. My love, behold, you are beautiful. Behold, he says it twice. Behold, you are beautiful. Behold, you are beautiful. Then he starts from the head and goes all the way down and starts praising her. He says, your, your eyes are like dove's eyes. You know, a dove only mates with one mate its whole life. In other words, he's saying you have faithful eyes. Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes that I would not look at another woman. And he, she's saying, I love the fact that you have, he's saying you have beautiful eyes. You have dove eyes. And then he says to her in the next verse, your hair is like a flock of goats coming down from Mount Gilead. <laughs> now that doesn't sound like anything to us, but back then they wore their hair up and, and she, took the, she took the little thing out, and when she took it out of her hair, the pen, her, her hair cascaded down. And he wasn't used to seeing that. It looked like, a, to him, the only way he could describe it, he, he's saying, you look like a flock of goats on Mount Gilead. <laughs> and, I mean, her hair is just, just going down. And I think, I can't prove it, but I think she did something like this. <laughs> and when, she, when, when women do that to us, He's, he's a, I mean, that's all it takes. Just, just, just. And it's something about that. And, and that's what he's describing. He's saying, I, I, your eyes are incredible. Listen to him, though. Come on, seriously. Look, listen to how he's building her up. You, you've got beautiful eyes. Your hair is gorgeous. I love, I love it when you let your hair down. Look at the next verse. He, he says, your hair is like a flock of goats. Your teeth are like a flock of sheep. You got white teeth, and I appreciate that, which come up from the washing. You brush your teeth, and every one of them bears twins. There's not any missing. They all have their twin, and they all look white and right, and I appreciate This is a big deal before dental floss. Come on. I'm preaching the truth. He's praising her. You can find something. Isn't that detailed? I love your eyes. I love your white teeth. I love your teeth. I love your hair. He's praising her. He says, your lips are like a strand of scarlet. Listen to this guy. Loving her insecurities away. Your mouth is lovely. Your temples are beautiful. Your neck is like the tower of David built for armory. What in the world is that about? <laughs> well, well, the, the Tower of David is where they kept their weapons and it spoke of security. And what he's really saying is, I love how secure you are. I love how confident you walk with confidence like you are somebody. And I love, it turns me on when I see your neck. This guy is a freak. I mean, he's into everything. He's got the hair, the eyes, the teeth. Look at that neck. Wow. Still in the books. Amen, somebody. <laughs> then verse 5, he says, your two breasts. 
Your two breasts? Yeah, it belongs in here. This belongs in here, not on a porn site. It belongs in marriage. Your two breasts, listen, your two breasts are like two fawns. That's baby deer. <laughs> Twins of a gazelle which feed among the lilies. Lord, have mercy. He, he said, he, he's teaching men here. He's teaching men here something that approach matters. Let's say you're out in the woods and, and you see two baby deer. If you want to get close to those deer, those twin deer, you don't come up and say, honka, honka. You don't do that. You come gentle. I'm in the book. Easy, slow, take your time. Right out of the book. Right out of the book. Isn't that amazing? Loving, tender, kind. Not give me what I want and I'm done. Right out of the book. If you're single, the word of the Lord to you is, will you be on your wedding night from this day forward a garden enclosed? You are to honor God and present your body as a living sacrifice. If you think something good, say it. If you think something good, do it. You see something, a flower, anything, get it for them. You did when you were dating, but we quit and we lose the sizzle. Well, how can I get the sizzle back? Guys, help around the house. Clean out her car. You know, I just told the men that approach matters. To the women, I would say, if you're married, just approach us. When's the last time you sent him a text and said, you better get home now? He'll hurt himself. My family's falling apart. My marriage is falling apart. My home is falling apart. Pastor, help, 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 help. And I will all I can, but you've got it mixed up. This stuff will not last. It's seek first the kingdom of God. Well, I hope today's message has encouraged you. We need to, we need to see God move in our families and marriages. I believe that the master plan of our enemy, Satan, is to attack, divide, and destroy families and homes. And the reason marriage is important is because the enemy's strategy is divide and conquer. If he can divide the husband from the wife, he can destroy the children, wipe out the generations. I just believe that God is ready to stand and bless and fight for your family. And I want to agree with you for that today. Maybe you've never invited Jesus Christ as Savior into your heart. That's where healing begins for homes, fam families, and marriages. Let Him in. Just say, Jesus, right there. Say, Jesus, be Lord of my life and my home and my family. I pray for your forgiveness. I pray for your healing in my home. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank God for the power of the cross that is fighting for our families today. And that's why I've written a brand new book, And Then We Were One. And when you order it, we're also going to send you a three DVD set. This book is exclusively available only through this ministry. And as we're offering it to you this month, get it with the DVD set. I'm telling you, you'll be equipped to see God move in your family like never before. Get it today. My announcer will tell you how. Brand new from New York Times best-selling author Jensen Franklin, And Then We Were One. This brand new book is filled with practical, down-to-earth principles to guide your marriage based on God's Word. And this month only, you can request Jensen Franklin's brand new book, along with all three sessions from our One Marriage Conference, with your gift of just $45 or more. This tried and true kit features three powerful DVD messages from Jensen Franklin and Pastor Robert Morris that will transform your marriage as you learn how to protect, mend, and nurture the bond of matrimony. This series, along with Jensen Franklin's brand new book, will inspire the marriage you long for. We want to do everything we can to support you in your marriage with resources to help you stay strong. For more information, please visit us at jensenfranklin.org or call us at 
This program has been brought to you by the friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. For more information on this broadcast or for additional resources, go online at jensenfranklin.org.